Okay, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we've been working on this autometric jig board for a while now. Uh, we repaired some hand wheels and did some other things to it. Uh, right now I'm working on the electrical. Um, it's got some electrical problems. Um, when the machine tipped over and broke these hand wheels, um, these uh, uh, drum switches got jacked up. Um, the, uh, here's the covers. I pulled the covers off, and uh, anyway, they're pretty mangled, and uh, I got to straighten those out. Uh, and the, uh, the switches are actually kind of free floating and messed up, so I'm going to pull the wiring off and pull them out of there and, uh, and see if I can straighten them up and salvage these so I don't have to buy new ones. It doesn't look like they're too bad. I think they're, uh, I think they're saveable. Um, I discovered something this evening when I started fiddling around with this. Um, when I got this from the guy, he said he had some extra parts for it. And uh, at the time, he didn't have them, so he dropped them off a few days later. Well, one of the things that he dropped off was a, uh, a remote spindle that actually fits on this, part of the, uh, on this part of the machine. You can't see it, but this part of the machine is actually on a rotary table also. Um, so this unit here, this is this remote spindle. Um, and it attaches to this rotary table so we can actually rotate that spindle and then uh, do work on the, on the faceplate of the machine. So that's all fine. I knew about this before and it's in the pictures uh, of the brochure that I found online. But uh, what I discovered uh, this evening that I thought was pretty cool uh, and it got me kind of excited about this is this little remote spindle that I got um, is actually R8. Um, so it's actually a really common collet size. So it takes an R8 collet here, it's got a little draw bar in the back. Now the spindle is actually, it's missing the, uh, it's missing the motor. Um, but I have the, I don't know, this is, he gave me this too. It sort of looks like a belt tensioner idler thing. I don't quite know how it works. It's not in the pictures and it's not clear. I don't have a motor for this. Uh, I don't have a motor for this remote spindle, but it's kind of uh, it's a pretty easy adaptation job. Uh, I'll scrounge up a motor somewhere, a variable speed drive or something, uh, and I'll be able to drive this spindle here. And uh, so it's R8, which is actually kind of cool. And I can you know you can buy collets all day long for that. It's not some weird thing that's just unavailable. Um, so now I'm starting to get a little more uh, a little more excited about this machine here. So first things first, I want to get the main motor and the feed motor running. Feed motor and main motor are in the base of the casting on the machine and uh, they look fine. Um, these switches are have some problems that I'm going to try to solve and um, then there's some wiring and fuses on the back of the machine uh, that need a little attention. So I'll get a piece of cord and um, uh, another plug so I can plug this in um, down on my three-phase. So I have a three-phase plug there that I can put the decal grinder on or put the lathe on or whatever. So it's not hardwired in so I can swap it out. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm going to take the wiring off here, uh, get these dismounted get them over on the bench and uh, we'll get another look at them and um, see how bad they are um, and see if they're salvageable or if I gotta buy some new ones. So um, stay tuned and uh, remember, nothing too strong ever broke. We'll see you soon. Okay, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So I got these uh, drum switches off of the uh, off of the jig bore. Uh, they were damaged in a, uh, in a rigging accident. Um, so I'm looking them over here and they don't look too bad. Um, I got enough uh, information here that uh, it looks like I'll be able to kind of repair them. Uh, we'll see in a little while. Um, so none of the, uh, uh, the Bakelite parts uh, seem to be too badly broken. Uh, this is the spindle switch here. Uh, it took a pretty good, uh, pretty good hit there, as you can see. But none of the important bits are uh, seem to be messed up. These 
these guys here, these are the contacts. Um, they have a little chip out of them here, but uh, looking at their the little recess that those drop into, I may be okay, uh, or I may be able to uh, to do something with them still. So I think uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all minor stuff here, you know, this is kind of tweet. This chip is the thing that's uh, got me a little bit worried there. So this one, uh, they're not chipped and they're still in the recess. So this one looks like a keeper here uh, uh, pretty easily. So I'm going to work on the, uh, the more jacked up one and see if I can uh, make some good out of it here. Um, so yeah, there's the cover. Uh, I've had a hard time getting the cover off of it too, so uh, straighten it out a little bit. And there's the wiring diagram inside. Um, okay, so let me get some stuff, some tools over here. Uh, I want to take it apart a little bit farther uh, so I don't, so I can work on it. Um, and um, oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, let's get some uh, stuff here. Yeah, I don't, I haven't lo um, bothered to look these up. Actually, I probably should. Maybe I, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I get into fixing this stuff and uh, you look in the catalog and it's like 30 bucks or something like that. Oh, so, gee, okay. Um, so, you know what, I'm going to do that right now, so let me grab the catalog. I got my brand new McMaster catalog recently. I like to keep one down in the shop. I do most of my shopping online, um, but uh, I really like having the book because Sometimes I just flip through it, and I tell people, uh, if you get one, uh, put your old one in the bathroom, and uh, when you're sitting there doing your business, you flip through it, and you find things you never even knew they had um, that you might not be looking for, but your brain remembers it, and then when the need comes up, you go, oh, uh, McMaster's got them, go take a look. So I actually, I'm pretty nerdy, so uh, I actually kind of read this thing. <laughs> I don't take it to bed at night, but uh, I do read it, so. All right, let's look under switches here. T. Did you know that the S section in McMaster car is the biggest part of the index? Check it out. All right, so S T. Swivel switches. Switch, oh boy, there's a lot of switches here. These are called drum switches. Drum switch, 879. All right, let's take a look. I used to be really good with the catalog. I could just pop right to the section. Uh, God dang it. What did I say, 879? Yeah, I think that's what I said. You know, <laughs> when, you're, when you're videoing and, and you turn to think, it doesn't work sometimes, okay? <laughs> So I'm hoping it's 879 because then that way I don't have to, uh, oh, yep, I don't have to look it up again. All right, so there's some drum switches. Indoor steel enclosure, that's us. What's the rating on these guys here? So single phase, polyphase. So this is polyphase, okay, it has three phase. Um, 115 to 230 volts. So this is two horsepower, three phase. So let's see what we got here. Indoor steel enclosure, stay switch, maintained, yes, yes, yes. Three phase, two horsepower, 48 bucks a piece. Stay switch, stay switch, maintain. One and a half horsepower. What's, oh, springs back momentary. Okay, so there's, the main difference is maintain contact or momentary contact, uh, like maybe you're a hoist or something like that, and then you let go of it, and it snaps back to a neutral position. So, oh wow, look at that. So yeah, look at that handle there. That thing's uh, torqued, um, although it still works. 
So yeah, these are maintain contact here, on uh, off, forward, and reverse. Um, so forty-eight bucks. What do I want to do? Well, you know, if I order one, it doesn't make a very good video. Um, and I'm already halfway into this thing, so let's mess around with it a little bit. But I'll keep that up my sleeve. 879 is the page number. Put that aside. My brand new one, too. It just came stoked. All right. So, what do we do here? This needs to come off. Got a little sheet metal cover on it. It's got to go. Ooh. There was some spring pressure on something there. I didn't lose anything. Oh, okay, I think it was just the switch itself. Alright, there's the drum. Drum looks okay. And then a little detents on the end to, to lock it. And then there's our switch body. And this bit in the bottom here is the uh, looks like it's a piece of uh, um, Nomex paper yeah this is this is like an insulator that you see in electrical equipment I'm smelling it because sometimes uh, these oh yeah it's phenolic so I just scratched it a little bit. I scratched it a little bit and then I smelled it. Um, and uh, so the phenolic gives off actually a really uh, a pretty distinct smell. Um, it's not a great smell, but it's certainly recognizable. So it's got a thin phenolic sheet in, in the bottom uh, as an insulator. Okay, that's just a little, the little roller contact. Alright, so, yeah, let's get that off. Well, I got a model there. Uh, it's kind of like doing the brakes on your car, right? The first time you do it, you only take one side off at a time. That way you can look at the other side and uh, um, have a model of what you did. Uh, let's see. Pull the spring off. Alright, so here's the metal housing, um, kind of bare. Um, let's see if you can see that. Well, you can see how bad that is. This side's messed up. And then this, let's see here. Uh, that way's better. These guys here are the uh, little retention tabs for the, uh, the contacts. In fact, there's a little piece of the, uh, the, the contact stuck in there or the contact block. All right, well this, this bit's gotta come out because it's messed up and I gotta straighten that. Get that piece out of there. Can I set that aside? I may end up gluing that back on or something. All right, let's get this out of here. Hmm. 
All right, let's give me a little trouble here. Just trying to be a little bit gentle with it. It's had a hard life, so. And I suppose the less straightening I have to do, the better. You know, if it's not so far gone. There we go. All right, so that's the little tab there. You can see that. All right, and then there's one that's there's one that's a little bit better right there. It's flat. I don't know how they get that thing in there. Actually, it's going to be. I may have to form it in place. So we'll see. Okay, so there's my uh, my messed up housing there. All right, I'm just gonna do some uh, some quick rough kind of straightening here. It's got some thin webs uh, between some of these cutouts that make straightening this a little tricky. Uh, um, the thin webs are weak, so the correction uh, tends to happen at those spots when maybe you don't want it to happen at those spots. So um, the uh, it be a little bit tricky. So. I'm going to tip this down a little bit so we can see the see the action here. Okay, that fits on there pretty good. So right out of the gate, I think I'm just going to get my rawhide and just kind of straighten that out a little bit and uh, flatten it out. So let me grab my hammer. So... Actually, I'm going to talk about this for just a split second. This is a uh, um, a Garland uh, rawhide-faced hammer. So the head is cast iron, but it has uh, uh, rawhide faces. Uh, this is about the best rawhide hammer, soft face hammer that you can get. Um, it's got some mass to it. It's not too heavy, uh, but it's got a soft face, and you can see that uh, uh, these faces have seen a little bit of work. Whenever I see these at flea markets, I snag them. Um, they're kind of a little bit expensive to buy, so people tend to buy the solid rawhide head ones, which are, the head's too light, okay? It's just, you know, it's a noise maker instead of a material mover. So these are great for uh, tapping stuff down in the vise, uh, in the milling machine. A uh, straightening job like this where I don't want to mar the piece up. Uh, and uh, you want a little bit of mass behind your hit. Um, because uh, it does more work per, per hit. Um, anyway, these are great. They come in a bunch of different sizes. They even have one that's a, a sledgehammer one. I have one of those at work, but I don't have one here, so it's on my, uh, on my shopping list. too bad so that's just a couple of wax and uh, taking most of that out um, it's got some more bend up in that area that I want to mess around with so it's got a twist too that's kind of kind of funky here so now I think I'm gonna work on the base a little bit so my method is that um, I want to do a little bit of correction and just kind of work my way around the part a few times. So I don't want to just straighten like crazy in one area and then leave the rest. So I want to kind of correct all the way around a little bit and just kind of work it all back in and uh, kind of simultaneously as opposed to, you know, getting this perfect and this perfect and then moving myself over here. So I did a little there. I'm going to do a little on the base because I want it to sit flat for the next part. Then I'll work on this side and then I'll come back to this side. It's all interconnected because when I straighten this, it affects that. So that's my method is I just kind of work my way around the part a few times until I'm happy with the whole thing. So let's see. No. No, these are, these are too wet. I'll get another block. Mm, it's a little 
bit there. Okay, I really want to do the bottom now, so I'm going to get a plate and clamp it down with a, a pretty studly uh, C-clamp and really uh, wake on it there. So let me grab a clamp. <clears throat> that right over that worst part of that bend and give it a little Bessie here. These things can uh, exert a couple thousand pounds of force here. They're just amazing. So I already took some out there. So now I worked that up thankfully. Uh, yeah, let me get a bolt. Oh, okay. So really what I want to do, so I got this block and I'm going to put it against this. So the hammer's not hitting it in one spot. I'm spreading that blowout over a, over a larger area here and, uh, and not causing any more, any more damage. So it's kind of like a broad faced hammer. I'll push back. Right, let's release that. And see what we got. All right, so yeah, that's getting better. So there's a joggle there, uh, kind of a tight joggle that's going to be hard to fix, but we'll get onto that in a sec here. So go back to this. I'm going to straighten a little more here. Yeah, bottom sitting better. So I got a. Uh, um, I got a little hump at this end here that I need to do something with. Uh, I want to basically drive that down. Ooh, sometimes you get lucky. So, I'm gonna clamp it. So, I'm just gonna use the clamp straight up. It's got a broad enough foot on it. Hold it down so it doesn't move. <coughs> All right, and. This technique, uh, in the olden days when they used to seal up ships and, uh, and um, the gaps in the boards of the ships, they used to caulk them, um, like caulking, but uh, they used oakum and rope and tarred rope, and they would drive that, uh, that caulking uh, between the, uh, the gaps in the boards, and they had caulking tools, which were kind of like dull chisels uh, in different shapes for different areas drive that caulking in, in the, into the gaps between the laps of, uh, uh, on boats. Um, so in sheet metal, uh, we still call it a caulking tool um, and you have different shapes and they might have a curve on the end, uh, but this isn't an official caulking tool, but uh, I'm using it like one. I just wanted to mention that. So, so I'm just going to, it allows me to reach in there and, and direct the blow right where I want it to be. That's the, the important part. Yeah, so, and then I, I can bias it a little bit if I need a little more on one side or the other. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay. a little more. Yeah. Start 
It's looking pretty tasty. So that's still up a little bit. Um, let's knock it back down some more. So I'm working on this, this heavy steel table here. You just can't do this on a wooden workbench. Um, you need that mass underneath there, an anvil or some heavy piece of steel uh, to, to uh, reflect that blow. Something with some mass that has some inertia. The blow is fast, but what we want is we want the, the backing thing to be kind of heavy and slow to accelerate, right? So like a dolly or a, a block of, of the material, heavy block of material. So um, that way we get our maximum lick here. All right. So this just keeps coming out. improving and you know what you want is slow steady improvement and uh, and don't do any more damage to the uh, to the bit uh, as you're working it all right so let's see what we want here. <clears throat> I'm liking that actually so I'm liking that steak will fit in there. Um, I'm going to get another caulking tool that I have that's a little, sh um, that's more chisel-like. It has a more of an edge on it. So, um, I kind of think this one is a, uh, um, it's got a name on it there. What is that? Manhattan, Manhattan Tool Manufacturing. Um, it's possible that this is a, a, a carpet tool, you know, for uh, tucking carpet in behind the tack strip. Uh, I'm not positive, but I saw it at the flea market and I said, oh yeah, I want that. Um, it's got a nice thin, flat edge. It's made out of steel and it's got a nice big fat head so I don't hit my finger like I usually do. Um, you're concentrating so much on what you're doing in there that sometimes you're not paying attention to the business end of this. Uh, thing so so now I can get right up in that corner and then uh, give it a good lick so I can feel it through the through the part it seems like it's down on the table now nicely so uh, um, yeah. yeah that's actually a nice tool I like that one so that's looking pretty good so what I really want to do now is I want to clamp something right up against that, that uh, the, the bend line there, and then bring this up. Because I don't, what I don't want is I don't want that part that's nice and flat on the table to lift up now. So, well, I think I'm gonna just bandsaw a chunk of this off and, uh, and clamp that right up against there and work it. So, let me go buzz that on the bandsaw and, uh, and then I'll be right back.